On Sunday afternoons, I drive to the local Trader Joe's to do my weekly food shopping. I like the handful of options I have, and while I have access to several high-end grocery stores, Trader Joe's offers poultry and seafood that doesn't break my budget. But here's something. I've thought very little about how the food I eat makes it to my plate. I just assume that wherever I purchase my groceries, everything is done above board. Maybe you do too. Lately, I've been learning more about the issues behind sourcing our food. Take seafood in particular. It turns out that illegal fishing represents more than a $20 billion industry. That leads me to wonder, how can we use new technologies to ethically obtain our food? And how can that tech also hold those who abuse this industry and our environment accountable? I'm Sherelle Dorsey, and this is TED Tech. Dive deep into the perils of illegal fishing with ocean conservationist Tony Long. Tony tells us how leveraging AI can help end environmental abuse and maybe even one day preserve our oceans. I joined the British Royal Navy at the tender age of 17 and in three decades of service lived and worked in every ocean. I witnessed firsthand the hidden world of the high seas, sometimes the only vessel for hundreds of miles, and other times I'd wake up surrounded in a fishing fleet that despite having powerful technology at my fingertips, I didn't really know who they were or what they'd been doing. It is a wild west out there, and rogue fishers, well, they're disobeying the laws that we put in place to protect our ocean and its resources, and they're pillaging colossal amounts of fish. And it's a crime that skews the science. So it affects the sustainability of our fisheries, it threatens the health of our ocean, and the well-being of millions of people, mainly in poorer countries. And it's not just pirate fishing that's threatening the future of our ocean. Out at sea, all spills are going undetected and therefore unpunished. There's a massive, unmonitored growth in shipping, oil and gas, exploration, and aquaculture, as I mentioned just a few. And this is piling pressure on an ocean that's already stressed by climate change. The straightforward fact is, if you can't see it, you can't manage it. And I know from experience, you can't monitor the whole ocean from the decks of ships. But you can from space. And these are interesting times because seemingly intractable problems are starting to yield to the power of technology, AI, and global interconnectedness. Up there right now, there's thousands of satellites beaming back an enormous amount of data from the remotest parts of our ocean. What if we could harness that data, make it useful and available to people who care about the ocean? Well, thanks to rapid advances in technology and AI, we can do that. Using GPS location data and machine learning, Global Fishing Watch built the first ever live stream map to monitor the industrial fishing fleet. At the moment, we see some 70,000 vessels. We've made this information public and freely available to the world. But technology moves on. Thank you. Technology moves on rapidly. There's new and emerging technology that we need to embrace in order to give this picture to everybody who needs it. Like when we were working with our partners in Japan and South Korea, they told us there was illegal fishing suspected in North Korean waters in contravention of the UN sanctions there. But when we first took a look on our map, we could see very little fishing because those vessels were not sharing their GPS location data as they should. We call them dark vessels, and generally, dark vessels are up to no good. So we had to turn to other sources of data. We looked at satellite-based radar and optical imagery, and we lit that region up. We revealed an armada of almost 1,000 vessels. It's one of the largest cases of illegal fishing ever seen. But there's huge human impact too, tragedy. Because the smaller, more rickety North Korean boats could not compete with that vast fleet, they were pushed further and further out to sea. And as a result, hundreds of them would be capsized to be washed ashore in Japan with the crew either starving or dead. We made our findings public, and as a result, we compelled the authorities to take action. Illegal fishing in that region has dropped by 75 percent, and we're not seeing hundreds of vessels now washing ashore in Japan. (laughs) 
The good news is, the techniques we use to illuminate what was happening in North Korea, we can use anywhere and everywhere to make the invisible visible. Today, any of you can click on the internet to explore roads and buildings on land. Why can't we do the same for the ocean? We need to create a dynamic, complete map of all industrial activity out at sea and make it available to everybody for free. Well, thanks to the audacious community, we're going to do that using GPS location data and millions of gigabytes of satellite imagery. We'll use AI to map and monitor more than a million ocean-going vessels. We'll monitor the entire industrial fishing fleet and those dark vessels. We'll add in hundreds of thousands of cargo vessels, tens of thousands of oil and gas structures, aquaculture farms, and wind farms. With this public information, conservationists will have the information they need to protect critical habitats, like National Geographic pristine seas. They're using our data to help work with governments and communities to protect critical habitats in seven marine parks with a combined area of more than twice that of California. And we're going to give researchers the data they need to advance ocean science, and we're going to give the media, campaigners, and the public powerful knowledge about human activity out at sea. And this comes just in time, because after two decades of talking, we finally have a treaty to manage the conservation of ocean life and the establishment of marine protected areas out on our ocean. And this is going to be critical, because there are 200, almost 200 countries have committed to protecting 30% of the ocean by 2030. And they will need tools like this to uphold that promise. We can develop the tools the governments need to uphold their commitments. We can inspire a new wave of ocean management through public data and open technology. Now, I might have salt in my veins, but you don't need to have sailed the seven seas to care about the future of the ocean. All life on Earth depends on it. It's providing the oxygen we breathe, it's regulating our climate, and it's providing the food that billions of people rely on. But ocean resources are not inexhaustible. We've got to protect it. We have the chance to do that today like never before. We can give a free, open access monitoring system for the entire ocean. Together, we can rein in this outlaw ocean, we can end pirate fishing, and we can transform ocean management for the common good of all. Thank you. All right, that's our show. Thanks for listening. TED Tech is part of the TED Audio Collective. This episode was produced by Nina Lawrence, who also wrote it with me, Sherelle Dorsey. Our editor is Alejandra Salazar, and the show is fact-checked by Julia Dickerson. Special thanks to Farah DeGrange for production support. If you're enjoying the show, make sure to subscribe and leave us a review so other people can find us too. I'm Sherelle Dorsey. Let's keep digging into the future. Join me next week for more.